Can you give some uh, general uh, information about the colorectal cancer at the ASCO? Sure. So this year's ASCO basically was focusing on immuno checkpoint inhibitors, so PDL and PDL1 inhibitors, and we do not have a lot of data on colorectal cancer here. So the data that has been presented at this year's ASCO with regard to colorectal was one was very interesting was the um, next generation sequencing of more than 600 samples of colorectal cancer really looking into the percentage and the frequency of um, tumors that may be um, that may be uh, treated with uh, PDL inhibitors in the future time. And as it has been um, <clears throat> thought before, it is probably the microsatellite instable population, which accounts for about 5, maybe 10% of the whole uh, population of metastatic colorectal cancer. So I think this is a very important work to really identify the right patient's population where we will have trials using um, immunocheckpoint inhibitors in the future. Another trial was looking into the um, aspirin use of more than 25,000 Norwegian uh, people and uh, with, with colorectal cancer, where they again were able to show that aspirin use after the diagnosis of metastatic colorectal cancer may benefit our patients. The third work that was an oral presentation was coming from the CLAGB Alliance uh, study, the CLAGB 80405. Um, looking into vitamin D levels and the, there again the effect of vitamin D levels was very small but big enough that they actually started a vitamin D uh, study where they uh, substitute the vitamin D in two different dosages and look if there are differences in overall survival. I think this is for the correctal um, um, session or for the colorectal part of ASCO, uh, the news that has to be reported. What do you take home from it for the clinical praxis? I think in patients that can endure aspirin, it might be interesting to start them with low-dose aspirin. Of course, always look at the side effects of aspirin, which are well known. And on the other hand, I think we need more data to really get into the vitamin D substitutions, which is common practice in the US. <clears throat> other than that, I think we uh, take home that the molecular subtyping of colorectal cancer is ongoing. And next to RAS mutations, BRAF mutations, the MSI high population may be the next population that will be targeted, uh, that will be treated with targeted uh, substances. You presented the poster from Fire 3. Can you comment on that? Well, this time we had several posters on Fire 3. The poster I was presenting was looking into the on treatment population. On treatment population was defined as it has been before in the NO6966 study. So, all patients that has the, had the PFS event, so death or progression, during treatment or within 28 days after the stopping of the treatment were um, defined as the on-treatment population, so progressing on treatment. And um, why did we do this? Because there were rumors that when we use bevacizumab until progression, the outcome should be better than with those patients where, the, where some kind of discontinuation happened and then the progression came. When we look at the data, first of all, we have to say that patients that are progressing during treatment have a shorter PFS and a shorter overall survival than those who progress after stop of treatment. There was a big difference in those who were, uh, who were progressing after the end of treatment with uh, a favorable overall survival um, benefit of cetuximab treated patients, which was about 10 months when we look at the several populations. So patients that are progressing during treatment have a worse prognosis and have obviously have a worse biology of the tumors. Patients where we can tr that we can treat and have some kind of treatment holidays and they are progressing during treatment holidays, those really have a better prognosis and here the cetuximab is really superior to the bevacizumab.
How you explain this difference of 10 months? This is very difficult to explain. <clears throat> In my opinion, looking at the data coming from depth of response and early tumor shrinkage, it is the case that patients that really have a smaller tumors at the time where they have a treatment holiday, those really will benefit from treatment holiday and here will benefit from cetuximab. Patients where have just a stabilization for a long time, which may be the case in bevacizumab treated patients, uh, will progress and will then have a higher tumor load at the time of progression. And I think this is the difference that finally drives the difference in overall survival. How do you treat BREF? Well, BREF is probably the next marker we will um, have in uh, colorectal cancer. Most of the high volume centers already have BREF information on their patients. So how can we treat those? The data we have so far is not negative for the use of anti-EGFR. So if the patient is fit enough, we use anti-EGFR plus doublet chemotherapy. Or if the patient is young and we really want to, uh, we really can treat him with a very extensive uh, chemotherapy, we would start them on uh, folfori nox plus minus anti-EGFR or anti-VEGF. There's fire 3 The next step will be fire 4 Can you comment on that? Yeah, FIRE4 is a study we just started. So we just got a positive votum from the ethical committee. It'll be a two-step design. Within first line, it'll be full theory cetuximab in RAS wild type patient until progression or interlabor toxicity. In the uh, experimental arm, it'll be full theory plus cetuximab uh, for eight or 12 cycles. And then we will have a maintenance switch, an early maintenance switch to 5-FU plus bevacizumab. Reasons for that are that looking to tumor dynamics in FIRE3, it became clear that the tumors really respond very well during the first maybe 20 weeks. And after that, they're just stable. So here we want to have an early maintenance switch, a switch maintenance towards bevacizumab and 5-FU or capcitabine to really stabilize the tumor on this low tumor niveau. Um, and within the first line, PFS will be the, the end point. When we look into uh, the third line here, we will test re-challenging anti-EGFR treatments, so re-challenging uh, cetuximab in combination with irinotecan or 5-FU plus irinotecan. And we will compare this to the ESMO guideline uh, standard, which would be regorafenib. Here, overall survival after randomization for third line treatment will be the primary endpoint. Thank you very much. You're welcome.